Well, I'm 57 years old, uh, but I still remember the, the day that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was killed. I was a 12-year-old boy growing up in Jackson, Michigan, uh, and I remember it was a rainy day in, in Michigan, and I heard the news, and I just left the house and, and walked outside, and I was walking around just very, very angry and frustrated. And at 12 years old, not really understanding why people get killed, why some people take the lives of other people and, and especially someone like Dr. King who was just really about helping people. Uh, very frustrated, very upset and uh, it just had an impact on me because I said here's a guy who was working for other people, uh, doing something to, to make other people's lives better and all of a sudden he was dead and, and, and at 12 I didn't understand that and, and couldn't figure out why. Uh, but fortunately, I had some good people around me, uh, my parents especially, that were there to help me sort things out. Well, we're here in Memphis at the uh, Civil Rights Museum. It, it's is actually the Lorraine Hotel where uh, Dr. King was shot in 1968, and uh, it's, it's pretty stunning. I've been here once before, but uh, you know, just standing here and realizing the history and, and what happened and what took place and how it kind of galvanized the civil rights movement. And uh, there is a, an unbelievable museum inside and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that and looking forward to the day uh, celebrating civil rights here in Memphis. Uh, this is Dr. King's hotel room, 306. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I remember trying to ask my dad and my mom why and what happened. And, it just talked about uh, people with shallow minds and, and not wanting to um, see any ideas that were different than theirs and that, that you couldn't be that way. And that's what Dr. King was all about, um, just really uh, opening up to everyone, loving everyone, and seeing respect and, and dignity for everybody. And uh, it's something I, I never forgot. And to be here, um, you know, right on that balcony, it still stirs memories for me. <sighs> I would talk to my dad about things in life and you know Dr. King being killed, things that just didn't seem right. And uh, my dad had a great perspective on things and his thought was always um, take in the information but think about what you can do to make things better. And uh, I remember I used to talk to him a lot about things not being fair in the, in the 60s or the 70s when I was growing up. Uh, but my dad grew up in the 40s and 50s and uh, his first job actually was teaching school in, in segregated Alexandria, Virginia uh, in 1951. And uh, at that time it was separate but equal. So my dad wasn't allowed to teach in the white schools. And uh, when, when I heard about that and when you tell me that story, I, I would just think of how bitter I would be. Uh, but my dad said it wasn't time to be bitter uh, and it wasn't his place to really make changes. He, he couldn't affect the law at that time. He, he told me all I could do to make things better was to make sure that my students in my school knew as much uh, as they could and as much about science as the other students. And I, I, I took that approach. I took that advice from my dad. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, years later, after we'd won the Super Bowl, and President Bush uh, invited the Indianapolis Colts to come to the White House, and we landed uh, at, at Reagan Airport and we drove through Alexandria, Virginia on our way to the White House. And it was, it was something, a moment I'll never forget, just driving through there and saying, boy, you know, a generation ago, my dad couldn't teach school at the white schools here. And now, because of him and so many people like him, his son is going to the White House. Um, it, was, it brought tears to my eyes and just made me think about the sacrifices people like Dr. King, like my dad made, to help my life be better.